think the buzzword of this afternoon has been uh, transformative action, uh, transformative change on the road to Kunming in China. Well, we heard earlier from a South African speaker that she was worried that it wasn't going to happen this year. It might happen next year, which was going to leave us with even less time uh, to reach those very ambitious 30 by 30 uh, targets. But what we're also hearing from many of the speakers is that you know, protected areas, yes, some of them, uh, there is no people in them, but actually people need to be at the heart of conservation efforts. And we've heard about indigenous people in particular because it's their lands which are these intact ecosystems. So we've got to really dig a bit deeper now into these rather intricate links between people and conservation. And I am proud to say we've got just the right people to do that. We have Miriam Boumeren, UNESCO Man and Biosphere Program, and from Hugo Rivero Mendoza, who's from the EU Support Post 2020 Biodiversity. And they're going to have a bit of a discussion, and we're really going to understand these links between conserving and restoring biodiversity and people. So over to you, Hugo. Thank you, Claire. And uh, thank you, Marion, for being here today and talking to us about uh, the topic of conservation and how to involve people uh, more in the conservation arena. Um, as uh, we all know, um, in 2010, the Convention on Biological Diversity decided upon the so-called Aichi biodiversity targets. Uh, at the time, they were considered a milestone to achieve the vision um, of living in harmony with nature. Um, uh, especially Aichi biodiversity target number 11, which called for 10% uh, of protected areas, um, marine areas, and 17% of uh, protected terrestrial areas, uh, was considered also a success in its implementation uh, because there was um, lots of uh, progress in, in implementation of that target. But was this really a success? Uh, what is your view on, on uh, um, target number 11? Uh, yes, hello, thank you, um, and hello, everybody. There was some success uh, in the figures. Uh, the targets were reached in terms of percentage, both terrestrial and, and, and marine. Uh, but uh, there are some concerns about the quality, uh, the effectiveness of those protected areas, the connectivity of these protected areas mm -hmm. with the, the larger landscapes. Um, and the quality, again, um, you know, the the justice and the making sure that it implies people. I think that what is important is to learn from that and in building this uh, negotiation to Kunming that we are going to, um, the vision of UNESCO is that it's important to have protected areas, it's important to have targets, both quantitative and qualitative, but it doesn't make sense to have a target of protecting 30% of the earth if we continue to behave and to destroy it elsewhere in the 70% 70, 70 remaining. That's why it's really important that we use the existing tools. For example, UNESCO uh, has 6%, is contributing to 6% of the conservation through different tools from mm -hmm. conservation to uh, biosphere reserves that are more this connectivity uh, landscape that are reconciling people with nature everywhere. We are part of nature. We should not see ourselves separated from nature. We should see ourselves as humans living in interaction, inter interdependency with other living species everywhere on the planet. We should focus some efforts in some key ecosystems indeed and restore them when we can, but we should behave and act and consume and produce everywhere on the planet differently so we can live in harmony now, not in 10 years, it's going to be too late. I understand, and um, from what I, I grasp, uh, we're talking here about reconciling um, conservation, nature conservation on the one hand, and the sustainable use of biodiversity on the other hand. And these are two of the most, uh, of the main concerns of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Um, it is one of the main concerns also of um, indigenous peoples and local communities within the discussions in the, in the convention and elsewhere. So uh, my question would be, um, as you know, uh, the convention is now negotiating on a new post-2020 global biodiversity framework. 
uh, which will be the follow-up to the IHG biodiversity targets. So can, how can the, um, this framework be a vehicle to uh, make this um, reconciling of uh, uh, sustainable use and conservation a reality? I think it's really important that this is becoming a concern for everybody, not only for Ministry of Environment, not only for NGO or people who are working in conservation or with species mm -hmm. or with uh, um, uh, animals or ecosystems restoration or conservation. This should be at the heart of our decision-making process. And we should change the way, again, we consume and produce and uh, our relationship with nature that nature biodiversity is becoming the wealth that we are investing in biodiversity conservation, restoration, and maintaining the pot potential, all the potential of the biodiversity and the living species for the next generation. It means we have to have a big shift in our behaviors, norms, social norms, economic norms, and values, putting biodiversity at the heart of all our decisions and involving everybody. The post-2020 is going to be a success if the private sector that you were referring to just before, if the policy makers, if everybody feels that they have a, a part to play, a responsibility from farmers, from agricultural sector, etc. So that's why it's really important to have a deal that everybody feels that they have ownership of it and that they can act and that they have a responsibility. For example, UNESCO has a partnership with Louis Vuitton Group, the first luxury group in the world. And this is a commitment from a big enterprise to change the way they are operating economically. And they are investing in biodiversity and committing not to destroy biodiversity anymore. We need examples like that in every sector. Every sector is concerned. We are all interdependent and we are all depending on biodiversity for our life as human, living in interaction with other living species. I understand, um, but this um, putting together the um, people and nature in the way that we um, organize all human activities is what we call transformative change, uh, exactly, and, and it involves a whole of society, a whole of government approach, and this is a very complex uh, endeavor, a very difficult task to achieve. Uh, especially if you want to take into account both reconciling sustainable use and conservation of biodiversity, as, as we were saying before. So my question would be, do you have any any best practice or examples uh, where of cases where this has been made a reality? And uh, can you tell us something about the, the benefits and the impact, positive impact that these examples have had on the ground? Yes. Uh, um... We are celebrating this year 50 years of the MAD, MAD, MAD and the Biosphere program. And uh, we have evidence that it's possible to live already in harmony with nature everywhere on the planet. Uh, we have, have mentioned the indigenous and local communities and in the Biosphere Reserve, it's about reconciliation between conservation and sustainable use. It's a platform where all the different stakeholders come together, agree on some core priorities and objectives and invest in win-win-win uh, activities. For example, in Guritz Biosphere Reserve in South Africa, they have restoring the spec with boom, restoring the land, that is a highly carbon absorbing plant that is providing jobs for the local community. So you can benefit restoration of ecosystems and biodiversity, address the climate change and provide jobs for the local communities. It's possible we have 714 examples at least in the biosphere reserve in the world and everywhere else. We should build on that, share those practices and examples and commit again, engage all the different stakeholders because it's already happening. It's our transformation is already there and we need the media to talk more about this positive transformation. So it's inspire people to change and to see that it's possible everywhere, including in urban systems. Well, thank you. That's very. I'm very happy to hear that we have uh, such a um, broad base of best practice to to draw on, and um, and uh, I encourage our viewers to to take a look at uh, at those best example pra uh, best practice examples. And um, I think we we are almost up with our time. Is there anything else you would like to mention? No, I, I think thank you so much. It's available on our website, and we are very happy to share the stories. It's really the good time now with the COVID-19 also and the link with the biodiversity, it's really the good time to change our relationship with nature, to restore our link with nature. Again, we are part of nature. We are not separate. This vision 
is not going to help us to make this transformative change. We really need to think of food, our air, our water is coming from the ecosystems, and we are again completely interdependent from each other and from the living world outside. We have one planet, not one planet for humans and one planet for other living species. So together we can live together in harmony now. Thank you very much, Miriam and Hugo. And I think that was a very clear message that we don't have two planets, uh, one for people and one for nature, and that they are interlinked and that we need to build on the post-pandemic mindset and have a green recovery where we really value these ecosystem services. We realize that nature provides us uh, clean air, uh, clean water, food, uh, medicine, and of course is very useful in the carbon sequestration for combating climate change. But what have we got to do? We've got to change the way that we consume and produce. And we've got to make sure that, as you said, it was a one society approach and that farmers, landowners, indigenous communities, governments, financiers, they are all speaking the same language as we go forward. And it was interesting that you say that that can work and you have some very good examples on your website about that biosphere. So that is wonderful. And in a moment, we are going to go to another discussion that is coming up shortly. <laughs> 